Hey everybody, uh, this is Mr. Beckstrom here again, and uh, today we're going to be looking at Chapter 7, uh, Part 4, uh, and this is going to be on annuities. So let's go ahead and get going. So what is an annuity? Uh, an annuity is, as we can read here, it's an interest-bearing account into which we make a series of payments of the same size. And if one payment is made at the end of every compounding period, the annuity is called an ordinary annuity. So what that means is if you are compounding your interest monthly, uh, then there's 12 months in a year. That means that you would make one payment at the end of every month. If you were compounding your interest daily, uh, you would be making a payment each day. Um, which is 365 times per year. So you need to make sure that you're making that payment um, on the same time scale as your uh, compounding period. Uh, and normally annuities in the real world are gonna be done monthly uh, because monthly is usually the easiest time to make sure that you're making uh, some type of regular payment uh, as it corresponds to just about all of our other bills in life. All right, uh, so the future value of an annuity is the amount in the account, in the account including interest after making all payments. Um, so let's go ahead and look at the formula here. So here's the formula for finding the future value of an ordinary annuity. Uh, you can see A here, that's gonna be the future value of our account, which includes both the principal, which is all the payments we've made, plus the interest uh, we've earned on that account. Um, R is the regular payment. So if you're paying $80 per month um, on an account that compounds monthly, then uh, R would be the $80. Um, the little r and the little m, that's going to be your rate or your percent uh, for your interest rate. Uh, the M is going to be your compounding, or your, excuse me, your compounding periods per year. So once again, if it was monthly, M would be 12. If it was daily, M would be 365. If it was weekly, M would be uh, 52. Um, if it was quarterly, M would be 4. So those are the number of compounding periods per year. Uh, the little N here, that's the total number of periods. Um, so what we do for that is we take the amount per year and we multiply by that by the number of years. So for example, you know, it's kind of easy to figure out if you were making monthly payments for two years, that would and would be 24 because it would be the two years times the number of compounding periods in that year. Um, don't get tricked if you see something in months. If you see, for example, if they say you're doing it for 18 months, uh, well, you have to convert that months to years before you put it in that formula. All right, you subtract one, and then you divide by your uh, interest rate over your number of compounding periods per year, and that should give you your future value. All right, so let's take a look at an example here and see how we plug these in and how we make that calculation. And I'm also gonna give you a little trick to make sure that you're in the, in the right, uh, your right area with your answer before you even do all the hard math. So assume we make a payment of $200 at the end of each month into an account paying 9% interest rate, uh, compounded monthly how much will be in the account after seven years? So if you were to pull up your calculator, and that one's a little bit too big, let's, if you were to pull out your calculator and you were to say, all right, uh, 200 times, I know I'm gonna make 12 every year for, and we're gonna multiply that by for seven years, I know that I'm going to put $16,800 just of my own money into that account. And that's a pretty easy calculation there uh, to figure out what the minimum that that's going to be after seven years. Now, this is going to be a, quite a bit more because we're getting interest on that account. 
uh, which we saw was compounded monthly. So when I get my final answer, it should be something a good bit more than 16,800, meaning that if I get my final answer and it's less than that, I, I did something wrong. And if I get my final answer and it's just way more than that, like $100,000 or more, uh, I know I did something pretty wrong. A 9% interest rate is a very good interest rate, so we should be expecting to see at least a few thousand dollars more than this. But, you know, in order to double or triple it, uh, that would be pretty unlikely. So, so that's what I'm expecting as an answer. I can do a pretty quick initial uh, kind of assumption what's going to be in there, and then my final answer should be close to that. All right, so... First, we need to identify uh, our variables in the formula. Um, so our regular payments, that's the payment that we're making at the end of each compounding period, which is $200. The future value, well, that's what we're trying to solve. The interest rate, we can that's 9% converted to a decimal, which is uh, 0.09. Uh, the annual compounding periods, well, it's done monthly. And since there's 12 months in a year, that number is going to be 12. The total number of periods, well, remember, that's going to be our M, which is our annual compounding periods, times T, which is the number of years. So that's 7. So 12 times 7 is 84. And then this R over M is going to come up a couple of times in our formula. And we're going to see we're going to also going to need to use that for our next chapter as well. So it's sometimes a good idea just to go ahead and, and get this calculation so we can just plug it in wherever we see the R over M. All right. So plugging that in um, and performing the correct order of operation. So we, this is our formula here. Now I'm going to go in there. Remember, I'm solving for A. So I'm just leaving the A out, and it's just going to equal the, the next thing until we get our final answer. Um, so uh, the R, big R is 200. Little r is 0 0.09. The little m is 12. Little n is 84. Um, and then once we do that, we need to use the correct order of operations. Remember, we do what's inside the parentheses first. Um, and then we're going to apply those exponents. Um, and remember, you always do uh, the numerator and the denominator of a fraction separately. Uh, you can kind of act like there's uh, parentheses around the numerator and parentheses around the denominator. Um, and then once you find that, you should get uh, $23,285.39. It looks like I put that in the wrong place. Um, so let's go back to our initial thing. I think we remember we said uh, it should be at least $16,800. This is a few thousand, well, about uh, six or seven thousand dollars more than that so that is definitely in the range of our possible answers so that's what it's going to be twenty three thousand two hundred eighty five dollars and thirty nine cents all right so let's go ahead and look at a sinking fund a sinking fund uses the same formula that we just used uh, the only difference is instead of solving for the a the future value we are going to be solving for um, R, which is going to be our payment. So this is, let's say we're trying to save for some type of large expense. Let's say we're trying to save for a car or a house or something like that. And we want to put a certain amount of money into an account, maybe every month um, that compounds monthly. Uh, this will allow us to know what our payment needs to be in order to get that future value. Uh, so if I need $10,000 in five years and I found an account that pays 3% interest and compounds monthly, this will tell me uh, what my monthly payment needs to be in order to get that $10,000 at the end of the five years. So let's look at an example. So assume you wish to save $12,000 in a sinking fund in three years to buy a new car. The account pays 13% compounded weekly. Nothing really pays weekly. I just kind of wanted to show you a little something different just to show you how the periods kind of match up with our payments. And you will also make payments weekly. 
Uh, remember, in order to use the annuity formula, our payments need to be at the end of each compounding period. And since our compounding periods are weekly, our payments need to be uh, at the end of each week. Uh, what should your weekly payment be? All right, so let's go ahead and identify our uh, variables here. Um, so the big R, which is our regular payment, this is actually what we are trying to solve for. So that's our unknown. Uh, a is our future value, which is what we're trying to save up is $12,000. Um, R is our interest rate converted to a decimal, which is 0 0.13. Uh, M is the annual compounding periods. Well, there's 52 weeks in a year, so 52 is going to be our little M. Our little N is the total number of periods, so it's 52 uh, periods per year times how many years? Times three years, so that's going to be 52 times three, which is 156. And then our R over M is 0.13 over 52, which comes out to 0 0.00. Two, five. And notice we use numbers here that are going to give us something that doesn't repeat. If we were just to come up with a couple of numbers off the top of our head, chances are we're going to get something repeating that's going to be harder to use. So I chose uh, numbers in the beginning that the 13 and 52, notice that those are factors of each other. 13 goes into 52 four times, um, so you're going to get a nice... Uh, decimal number at the end here. All right, um, so let's go ahead and plug it in. So we have our formula. Um, this time we are solving for R, so I'm not just doing the equals. I do this little arrow here to show what I'm actually doing to this formula. I'm uh, re-entering the entire formula uh, because I'm solving for R. So we plug in all of our values, the 12,000 for our future value. We leave the big R because that's what we're solving for. Our R over M is the 0 0.0025, so I can plug those right in like that. And the little n is 156, so I plug it in there. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, this fraction here, this quotient, I'm going to go ahead and work that out um, so I get an actual value uh, next to my R, and uh, once I get that hundred and ninety dollars and fifty or one ninety point five zero um, next to my R, the last thing I do is I'm going to divide that by both side, divide the uh, both sides by the hundred ninety point five zero. That will allow me to solve for R, which comes out to sixty two dollars and ninety nine cents. So going back up here. So if, if I were to uh, put away $62.99 every week for three years, uh, I would get $12,000. All right, and that's it. So work out some of the problems in the book and on my math lab. And once again, if you have any questions, please let me know. Thank you, and have a great rest of your day. Thanks.